honorable ministers who are here from the Africa, your excellencies, the organizers of this meeting, I would like to thank you all for giving me this opportunity to address you on some aspects concerning Uganda, East African integration, and some aspects of uh, African Union. Uganda is a small country. The total area is 241,284 square kilometers. And of this, 44,000 square kilometers is covered with water. The country strides the equator, but believe me or not, there is snow covered mountain, the mountains of the moon, the highest mountain in Africa. The country is evergreen, and that is why someone called it a perpetual garden, the power of Africa. It is endowed with a variety of wildlife. Uganda is actually home to 500 mountain gorillas out of the world population of 700. And it has over 1,000 species of birds. From rolling hills, you move to savannah, flatland, especially in the north. So this is just a brief introduction of Uganda. The country is endowed with fertile soils, rich in minerals, and recently we have discovered oil in commercial quantities, 2.5 2 billion barrels now, but rising to 6 billion barrels soon. The population of the country is now 33 million. So in a nutshell, this is a brief introduction to the Uganda, as I've said. Uganda has undergone rapid transformation, especially since the coming into power of the present government in 1986. Actually, the ruling National Resistance Movement Party has continually been elected to power every five years in a free and fair multi-party elections. To highlight some of the achievements the government has put in place, sound macroeconomic policies, resulting in an average growth of 70% of GDP over past decades. Inflation has been in single digits. In fact, on 29th June, let's quote an example, 2011, the International Monetary Fund held Uganda for maintaining macroeconomic stability and alleviating constraints to growth. The fund endorsed, endorsed Uganda's policy support instrument. A successful policy support instrument, as you know, is important for, among other things, attracting foreign investment. As a result, Uganda is among 10 investment destinations in Africa, according to Africa Business Confidence Index report. FDI is estimated to be $1.5 billion this year, mainly because of oil. The economy is private sector driven. Our currency, the shilling, is fully convertible. An investor can repatriate 100% of the profit. A sound regulatory regime is in place to ensure the necessary infrastructure for development and to expedite speedy resolution of commercial dispute. As you know, this is important for business. Commercial division of high court has been set up. The country now enjoys political stability on a continent which often has seen a lot of conflicts. Ladies and gentlemen, the government has prioritized certain areas for development, e.g. roads, railways, energy, ICT, agro-processing, water and sanitation, education and health. We have set 2015 as our goal to move to a middle-income country, and we believe this is achievable. For instance, in the energy sector, we have moved from 
a paltry 60 million, I mean 60 megawatts of electricity for a whole country in 1962, you can imagine. Now to about 850 uh, megawatts by end of this year. We are now developing major and mini power hydro plants with a target of reaching 3,800 megawatts by 2015. Investors, both public and private, are welcome. In 1996, 58 percent of the population was poor. By 2010, the rate has dropped to 23 percent. We have free primary and secondary education and over 23 universities. Human resource development is therefore a key to our development. However, many challenges still remain. Many rural areas still don't have access to clean water and sanitation. In fact, rural coverage is about 65%, which is not bad. Only 12% of the population has access to electricity. And only 10 million people have now mobile phones out of a population of 33 million. However, many telephone operators are coming on the scene and use of mobile phones for business uh, purposes is on the increase. There's a lot of mobile phone banking in our country now. Infant, maternity, infant and, and maternal mortality is still high, but is being addressed. A lot still has to be done to reduce poverty levels. Therefore, government has put in place a mechanism known as National Agricultural Advisory Services to help farmers acquire the necessary skills and equipment to improve their household incomes. Microcredit is being channeled to farmers through microfinance institutions. On a regional level, Uganda is now an active member of East African community, which comprises Burundi, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Uganda, with a combined population of 130 million and GDP of about 100 uh, billion dollars. This is a formidable market for anybody interested in investing in the area. There is now in place a customs union for these countries, common market, which came into force last year, and by next year, it is envisaged we shall have a common currency for the, for the five countries. And the goal of integration is to attain political federation. We shall actually be, take a step higher than the European Union. For us, we are aiming at federation, and I think we are going to achieve it. Uganda also plays an important part at the continental level within the framework of African Union, especially in the peace and security area. Our forces now form the bulk of the AU peacekeeping contingent in Somalia. For some years, we were the only force there until Burundi joined us later. We believe it is our duty as Pan-Africanists to help stabilize Somalia and free it from the grip of terrorism, which is a threat not only to the region, but to the whole world as well. The peace and security architecture of the African Union is now reasonably well established, working in conjunction with the United Nations Security Council. Long before the United Nations embraced the principle now known as responsibility to protect in the cases of genocide, crimes against humanity, and ethnic cleansing, African Union had already provided in, in its constitutive act uh, that principle. States will no longer, therefore, hide under the cloak of sovereignty to cover up uh, these crimes I've mentioned. So Africa is actually a pioneer in this field. The African Union has also established what they call a peer review mechanism to improve governance. States voluntarily submit themselves to be reviewed on their governance record. The United Nations Human Rights Council 
has now embraced this mechanism of universal review of human rights practices. Uganda has been, of late, 2009-10, a member of the United Nations Security Council. We just left it last year. And, peace, and also a member of Peace and Security Council of the African Union. So we have been playing active role in peace and stability on the continent and the whole world. Currently, we are members of the United Nations Human Rights Council. Our international credentials are therefore impeccable. Lastly, to quote Financial Times of Monday, 2nd May 2011, and I quote, international companies from Europe, the USA, Asia, and now Latin America have been avidly looking to increase their profile in key African nations such as Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda, and Zambia in the aftermath of the financial crisis, end of quote. Come, therefore, and be part of this global movement by investing in Uganda. I thank you.